What's up everyone, this is Dariusz Kolbaczy, co-founder of MG Poland, JS Poland, AI Poland and Angular Master Dot Dev. Welcome back to the Angular Master Podcast. Today we've got a special guest straight from San Francisco, USA, AI developer productivity at Google, speaker, author, blogger, podcaster, ladies and gentlemen, Minko Getsche. Hi, Minko. How are you? Doing pretty good. Yeah, how are you doing? Perfect. Let's talk about Angular 20 and 21. What makes Angular 20 special compared to earlier versions? Yeah, so um, usually when we're building major features, such as, let's say, zoneless or standalone components or signals, these features go through multiple stages of development. We first collect all the feedback from the community. We prototype these features and we allow them as experimental and after that we keep polishing them until we're feeling comfortable with them to allow them as stable so in version 20 we spent a lot of time in polishing some major features such as zoneless we graduated a lot of other features out of developer preview to stable such as incremental hydration and route level render modes and um, that's where we spent most of our focus just polishing existing features. And of course, we launched some new things that we can chat about. What were the biggest challenges when building version 20? Yeah, so we were originally worried a little bit because uh, all of our releases pretty much since version 14 or maybe depends, depends on the point of view around 14, we started shipping a lot. And we were worried that, well, the community may get disappointed if we don't ship just as many features as we shipped in previous releases. Uh, so we didn't really have too many challenges. We were just worried that we are not going to meet our um, amazing community's expectations, but we ended up actually doing pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with the results. So how has the community reacted uh, to the changes in version 20 so far? I saw a lot of positive feedback. People were very excited about Zone as being finally very close to stable and uh, also to some of the new APIs that we shipped for using streams with signals, like the streaming API in resource or HTTP resource. We saw also a lot of uh, positive feedback about launching incremental hydration as part of, like, in stable now. And uh, also we received over a thousand comments in the Angular mascot RFC. So the community has seemed to be pretty excited about the latest changes. Yeah, th- that's amazing. The mascot is really, really cool. What was the idea? Yeah, we were, well, I guess that was kind of my passion project that I've been moving for, for a bit now. I, uh, I'm i not a designer, I'm a, like an engineer, but I always wanted Angular to have like a symbol, something that I can put on my bookshelf in the back and uh, to represent Angular. So um, pretty much, Worked with the designers behind uh, the Flutter and the the Dart and the Firebase mascots. They asked us to share with them a lot about the story of Angular. They looked at the documentary. Uh, they wanted to hear about some inside stories. So we shared all these things. Uh, they analyzed the strengths and the weaknesses, the opportunities for Angular. And based on this, they came up with these three different characters. We really liked the angler fish, uh, similarity to Angular as kind of inside joke uh, to an extent. Also liked how the angular shaped character represents Angular really well, kind of sim- similar to the shield that we have. Uh, and the community has decided that they would like to see in the final mascot way more features from the angler shaped angular shaped character. So uh, now we're iterating with the designers on the final design. Why is the new control flow with at for and at if important? Yeah, well, it is it has significantly simpler syntax and more intuitive because it's very close to what JavaScript offers. And also we optimize that a lot internally. So if you're using for, the differs that we use there, the list consolidation that we have is significantly faster compared to the like previous uh ng4 control flow with the iterable differs and uh 
overall has better type checking as well, so better ergonomics, better performance. How does Signal Store help with state management in real projects? Yeah, I'll see that will be probably uh, something for the NGRX team. Uh, like a better question because like we currently don't ship Signal Store out of the box with Angular. Uh, there are some community developments in this. Like overall, it's good for more complicated like referential types or for more central state management. Do you think signals are now the default way to write Angular apps? That's our recommendation, yeah. Since we graduated pretty much all the APIs to stable now, that's our recommendation for people to start using them to manage their like change detection. And we also graduated, uh, or we're about to graduate, Zonus to stable. So Zonus with signals will be my recommendation to move forward. How much faster or smaller can apps get thanks to V20? Yeah, uh, well, version 20 makes... Uh, the, the difference there is that, uh, I, I guess, version 20.2 or so, whenever we graduate, uh, Zonus to stable would be the right uh, time to measure since we can drop ZoneJS dependency. I was doing some uh, just friendly comparisons. I was looking at the React Hello World bundle and the Angular Hello World bundle. And it seems like we're significantly like smaller with zoneless Angular and Signals compared to React, which was interesting to see. For a long period of time, Angular was generating a lot of code and was bringing a lot of functionality as part of its main bundle. But it is uh, just satisfying to see now that we shifted this. You are now listening to the Angular Master Podcast by Angie Poland. Listen, code, repeat, all you need to know to become a super Angular developer. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and drop us a cool comment. And don't miss out our second show, the JavaScript Master Podcast, where you find tons of fantastic JavaScript topics. Have you already seen good examples of projects built fully with signals? Yeah, in Google we have quite a few projects actually, but probably the most prominent example because it was the first one that started using signals was uh, uh, Google Forms, uh, Google Fonts. Sorry, Google Fonts. And uh, I've been talking to a lot of developers at events I was at, and a lot of people are telling me that they're already using entirely like signals in their whole application. So it's great to see this. What feedback about version 20 surprised you the most? Can't think of any major surprises. I was anticipating even the results from the mascot RFC. Uh, so nothing major just yet. Yeah, things have been things have been going pretty much as we expected. So what lessons did the team learn from building version 20 that will help with version 21? Yeah, well, every, like, version 20 was relatively uneventful. Um, we were able to ship the features that we wanted. We committed to the right scope. So, uh, and we've been doing these releases for a while now. It's going to be close to 10 years. So every every release, the learnings are, I'd say, glad that they're decreasing over time since it has been mostly a routine process. Uh, one thing that worked out pretty well is um, launching officially during the release events the day after the release, which worked out pretty good. This kind of reduces the stress on our side. We don't have to, like, we can schedule the release event and if something goes wrong with the release for one or another reason, I don't know, like we try to publish a package and for some reason NPM is down or whatever, uh, or there is like a bug in the release scripts, which hasn't happened, but Everything can, anything can happen. Uh, this allows us to fix the issue and still launch the release event whenever everyone is expecting to uh, to watch it. So um, this this thing worked particularly well. Can you share anything about what we can expect in version twenty one? We've been working a lot of on signal forms, and uh, you might have seen already that we would like to improve developer experience when using different Gen AI models. So we're going to continue trading on that. I would say 
signal forms for version 21 is quite likely, just some kind of experimental or very early preview. Um, and at the same time, we're going to continue providing like better context to LLMs so that they can produce higher quality Angular source code and support developers in their engineering process. So will signals and reactivity be improved even more in version 21? Signals are in a pretty good place right now. Something that we can consider is moving some of the signal APIs like resource and HTTP resource, advancing them further. So far, I don't think we have any particular plans around that. Um, signals and reactivity are in a stable place, which I'm pretty happy to share. A lot of the advancements would be around supporting AI to do better job. And of course, as I mentioned, signal forms, which is part of the signal story still. So will uh, version 21 include anything completely new that we haven't seen in version 20? All these advancements in the AI developer experience are pretty new and there might be some surprises. So why is a good time for teams still on old Angular version to upgrade? Yeah, well, with every single Angular version release, Angular is getting faster, more secure, and smaller with better developer experience. So if you're using, I don't know, let's say Angular version 8 or so, if you switch to version 20, just everything is going to be faster. It's going to be bringing you more joy to build your new features. You're going to get uh, probably better support out of your IDs I, uh, AI features because they understand the latest versions of Angular and uh, your application will be more secure. So definitely consider the updates. It's going to increase your velocity. It's going to improve the performance of your applications and for sure it's going to make Angular more enjoyable to use. Now is the question, the, the most important question for me. Is now a good moment to write a book about Angular or is it better to wait because the big changes are, are coming. It's uh, tricky. I, I, I've written books there, like on the bookshelf about Angular. They're still mostly up to date, even though I wrote them, I, I kind of, we published them, I guess, in 2016 or 2015. I would recommend, I usually recommend people publishing books about general software engineering patterns because these developer APIs that we, we develop, they change very frequently. So that would be my recommendation. There is, it's not, it's not like a comment about the stability of Angular. I believe it is pretty stable. Uh, but uh, these days, just software evolves pretty quickly and focus on the fundamental patterns is usually a better investment for a book. That's, that's at least my experience. And that's it for today's episode of Angular Master Podcast. Huge thanks to Minko Getsche for sharing so many great insights about Angular 21 and beyond. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to subscribe, share this episode and leave a review. It's really help us grow and reach more Angular enthusiasts around the world. And of course, I like to personally invite you to join us this November in Warsaw or online for NG Poland, JS Poland and AI Poland, three incredible conferences, bringing together some of the brightest minds in web and AI development. You meet amazing speakers, connect with the community and experience the energy of Europe's most cinematic front-end and AI events. All the details and tickets are available now at ng-poland.pl, js-poland.pl and ai-poland.pl. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time and see you in Warsaw this November. <laughs>